Hello everyone, this is John from the Kraken Clan. I wanted to do this video talking about the brutal truth about the Roman Catholic Papacy. So uh, I wrote a little article here. I took some notes from a, uh, a book about what happened during that time. And uh, here is a quick Bible verse. It's uh, Revelation 17 verse 6. Uh, and it says, I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus, and I saw her, and I wondered with great admiration. So, Rome, the Roman Catholic Church, is basically the harlot described in Revelation. And uh, I wrote here, uh, No religious or political system has, has ever been as wicked or bloodthirsty as the Roman Catholic Papacy. There's been, there's been no one in history that has been that, that bad as the Catholic Papacy. The Roman Catholic Papacy is so wicked that even they would even make Muhammad or Joseph Smith, or not Joseph Smith, uh, Joseph Stalin, blush. That's how bad they are. So there's been no one this bad in history. Um, when a man was suspected of heresy, spies called to familiars were sent to watch the man. He might have been suspected of holding liberal opinions or, or op opinions that differed from the Catholic Church a bit. Any of these things would create suspicion. One one thing the the Catholic Church um, dreaded and feared most was the truth and God and God's word. The Catholic Church they feared and dreaded God's word. Um, he was now marked and avoided as a heretic uh, sorry, by by the familiars. Late at night, a uh, knock was heard at the door of the suspected heretic. Um, uh, sorry. Yeah, sorry, I can't read small text. A knock was heard at the door of the suspected heretic, of, of the suspected heretic's home. The suspected heretic was ordered to accompany the messengers of the holy office. His wife and family know what this means. They must now say a final farewell to their beloved father and beloved husband. The Roman Catholic Church has put such terror in the hearts of the people. When the messengers came to collect a heretic, the family would do nothing in defense. They're, they're so terrified, there's nothing they could do in defense. Because if they said anything, they take them too. Um, out of fear, no nobody from the rich, from the poor knew when. when so no, basically, no one from the rich or the poor knew when that dreadful knock would come. Neither rank, age, sex, or class would be a defense against the horrors of the Inquisition. The helpless victim was now within the gates of the Inquisition. Very few who entered it ever left it with no charge of heresy. Only about one in a thousand. Uh, accused heretics were ever left with no charge. Uh, the Inquisition would, would, would operate in, in big secrecy. No witness was ever brought to testify against the supposed heretic. So they had no witness, they just simply had him, oh you're accused. A common tactic to force confession was applying bodily torture on the accused heretic. The accused was asked if he had ever had an evil thought about the Catholic Church. It didn't matter what answer he gave. He was denounced as a heretic by the Inquis Inquisitors. Claim that they're only doing it because they so what they did was that they they were torturing him and they claimed that they're only doing it because they loved his soul and they wanted to deliver him from error and and they're hoping he could attain salvation. Um, the inquisitors claim they're only doing it because they loved they have love for his soul and their desire to deliver him from error so he could attain salvation. But this this claim was made uh, after this claim was made a vast amount of torture devices were shown. So apparently it's loving to torture somebody. A common torture method was the rack. Oh, okay, let, let's just pause here for a sec. Where in the Bible did Jesus Christ ever put people on the rack to confess their heresy or their sins? Where did the apostles put people, where in the Bible did the apostles put people on the rack to get them to confess their heresy or sins? Completely unbiblical. A common torture method was the rack. The naked arms were, were uh, to which a small hard cord was fastened and turned behind the back. Heavy weights were tied to the feet, and the suspect and uh, the accused was drawn up by the use of a pulley um, to the height of the ceiling. So they had him to the top of the uh, ceiling, and they're pulling him by, by uh, use of a pulley. After being suspended for some time, he was suddenly he was suddenly left down with it, let down with a jerk. Uh, after this was done several times, the arms would dislocate while the cord that he was suspended on would cut through the skin and the flesh and would penetrate the bone. That was love, apparently. This type of torture continued for an hour and even longer sometimes. It all depended on the pleasure of the Inquisition and the strength of the accused heretic. The Inquisitor also used torture by fire. 
That's nice. Uh, the accused heretic was being suspended by the was um, being suspended by the floor. Lard was rubbed on his skin. They wanted to grease them up first before they burn them. They grease them up first. Lard, um, yeah, so lard was rubbed on the skin, and he was placed near the fire. They moved them closer and closer to the fire. So what they did was they rubbed them up with lard, and they placed them close to the fire. The fire would burn his skin with the lard, and they kept moving him closer and closer and closer. Wow. Um, that was love. That was love. That was love. Apparently, that was supposed to be them loving his soul. In my opinion, that's a very strange way of showing love. Very interesting way of evangelizing. Very strange and unique way of delivering, of lovingly delivering your brother from error. Wow. That was love, apparently. Uh, people were sent to the dungeons where the accused heretic was. They, so basically what they did was they sent people to the dungeons. Uh, they came pretending to be a fellow heretic and would speak against the Inquisition, but only as an attempt to get only as an attempt to get the accused heretic to confess his heresy. What they do? They sent someone in there to snitch on him. They sent someone in there to pretend to be a heretic, but really he was working for the Inquisition and he was just snitching on him, basically telling on him. He would report back to the Inquisition what he was told. Um, the sentence. They were, those sentenced to death by fire were allowed to accumulate that the sacrifice of a great number at once may produce a more terrifying effect. It wasn't enough for them to burn, uh, for them to burn, or no, it wasn't enough for them to burn one person. They had to get several people to burn to sacrifice to their god, basically. Because the god of Roman Catholicism is Satan. So they had to get a bunch of people to, number one, sacrifice to their god, and number two, uh, strike terror into the fear and fear into the hearts of the citizens. Wow, and and this is supposed to be Christianity? I think not. The cruel death by the uh, by the Spanish Inquisition was regarded uh, as a religious ceremony, as the cruel act was done on Sunday, the Lord's Day. Wow. Uh, the innocent victims of this Roman Catholic barbarity were led forth in procession to the place of the execution. They were dressed in a fantastic manner, on the caps and tunics for some painted the flames of hell, dragons and demons. The Jesuits were thundering in their ears that the fires before them were nothing compared to the fires of hell. So basically, they're walking, they're about, to be, they're, about, they're about to be burned at the stake, and these Jesuits are just like thundering in their ears, taunting them, saying, Oh, you think this is bad? You're going to be burning in hell for all of eternity. Wow. And that was love, apparently. Um, yeah. If any brave Christian attempted to say a word for the Lord, he was gagged. Well, you want to lie? Well, we can't have him telling the truth, can we? We can't have him telling the truth. Why, you ask? Well, because Satan is terrified of the truth. The papacy and their master, Satan, hate the truth. That's why they gag them. You, they can't have him telling the truth, can they? This horrific display was witnessed by crowds of people of both sexes and of all ages, with transports of joy. The event was a national holiday in Spain, in which a, a higher-ups higher up specifically royalty, witness in the pomp of royalty. It was the show, basically. It was the show for everyone to come to. P parents would bring the, the little kids there and watch them burn some heretics. Bunch of Luciferian devils. Bunch of, bunch of Satan worshippers. That, that's all they are. A bunch of Satan worshippers. Um, yeah, it was the show for... So yeah, that's pretty much it actually, the little article I wrote about the bloody history of the papacy. I took some notes from a sermon, but the bottom line is, is that the Catholic Church, they're not Christian. And think about it, they did this, the biblical Christians, because they, um, because, because of course, they hated Christians. They, they've always had a bloodthirsty um, lust for the blood of God's people. So, yeah, and by the way, the Jesuits are they are thunder, thundering in their ears. Oh, you're gonna burn in hell. You know what? They're the ones that are burning in hell right now. Bunch of wicked Jesuits. Anyway, so thank you for watching this video. Um, hopefully, it's been an eye opener. Uh, goodbye.